Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter well we're going to take a look at the use of center points in design of experiments. So this is a little bit of a technical technical video. Uh, it follows on from uh, it follows on from a video that I did about the central composite design, um, which the central composite design requires you to run center points. But it's also a great example of how, in my role, I go around to clients and clients teach me things as well as me teaching clients things. So I'm going to pass on some extra DOE knowledge that I've learned from, from working with a client who already uses DOE and they wanted me to train some of their staff. But when we looked at their technique, my technique, realized that actually they have a nice use of center points in their DOE, which is different to mine. And it's worth just pointing out how you can do design of experiments and how you can do them slightly differently. Before we do that, let me just remind you, drink tea, read the paper, my book, all about Six Sigma. Um, all the basic statistics are in here. Um, all the design of experiments stuff is in here. So if you want to know more about all the things that I teach in my videos, Drink tea and read the paper. You can get it from lulu.com. So please log in, purchase the book. Also, please subscribe and also click on the like. It helps with the channel, um, helps to promote the channel so more people get to see the videos. So let's get on to the use of center points in design of experiments. Now there are essentially, there are three ways really that you can put center points in a DOE. So the first one is that you use them, you use them to confirm your linear model. Okay, you use them to confirm your linear model. Now this is, this is the way that I typically do this. And then what I'm also going to do is if the linear model doesn't confirm, I'm going to use them to augment to the central composite face design. Now this is, this is the technique that I typically use. So that's use number one. Use number two is the one that I've recently learned from a client, which is that you, you use them to anchor, you use them to anchor the design space. which we'll talk about in a second. And the third one is very simple, which is you just, you use them, in what you might call a three level, some people call them response surface DOEs. So you use them in three level stroke response surface DOE. In other words, they're just part of the pattern. And you just you just go work your way through the pattern and center points are part of what's what's requested. So let's talk about the three techniques uh, and show you the difference. Now, as I say, this is my current use, but I, I do like this. This is a this is a nice use, and I might combine a little bit of what, what's going on here with what's going on there. So let's talk about technique number one. Now technique number one is this. I'm, I always advise my clients to assume that we have a linear relationship until we can prove otherwise. So we are, so we are gonna test low, we are gonna test high, and we are gonna assume that there is a linear relationship. But of course that linear line 
has a weakness if it's not actually straight, if it's curved. So if the model is really a curve like this, then of course what we want to do is we want to pick up that curvature. Now of course the weakest place for this model is in the middle here. So if we can do a test here, which of course is the midpoint. So center points effectively, it's the center point of the design space. Now what I'm basically doing, I'm building up a central composite design should I need one. So if you take a look at the pattern here, I've got the central composite looking in an Excel spreadsheet, you can see that the top half is the full factorial. So the top half is just a basic two level. Here what I've done is I've done a, I've shown a two to the three in the top of this central composite design. So you can see the central composite it starts off with the two level. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to run the two level portion, then I'm going to test the midpoints. Now if the midpoints confirm, I don't need to do that bottom portion. So you can see those extra tests at the bottom. So in other words, I've got away with a cheaper design of experiments. And for me, that's the way I teach my clients. Two level DOE, confirm at the midpoint, decide whether you need to do the rest of the central composite face design. If you do, collect all the data and then analyze it as one big test. Now that's my use of center points. But I came across this one, which is that one of my clients uses the center points to anchor the design space. So what do I mean by that? Well, key point when you're doing a DOE, you have a design space. In the case of a three level, three factor DOE, so let's say it's time, let's say it's temperature, and pressure, you're testing at the corners you're doing the eight corners that you saw in that central composite design that we looked at earlier. But a key point about setting the process up ready to do this, you have to get control of the environment. So this is, this is all the variation in your process. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to make sure that the environment in which that box sits is as consistent and as controlled as possible. Because what's happening is that box is bouncing in space slightly because of variability. Now if this box is moving all over the place, clearly any maths that you put inside this box is not going to work properly. So you need to anchor the design space. Now we do that with control. We do that by trying to control everything on the process, on the machine usually. But of course sometimes you slip up, sometimes you don't control what's going on. So a good way to decide do you have control is to use the center points to just confirm that you've got control. So let me just create a little bit of space here a second. So here's how they use the center points. They actually start, so this is time, temperature, pressure. The first test they do is a midpoint. I'm gonna do this thing here. Okay, so what they're doing is they're saying right at the start of the experiment, here's where the middle of the box was sitting. Then what they do is they run a portion 
of the experiment usually 50% of it I'm just going to put a couple of rows in there to represent that but they'll run 50% of the experiment then what they do is they come back and do another center point then what they're doing is they're running another portion of the DOE the second 50% and then they finish the thing off with another center point. Now obviously what we're trying to see is these values here all remain equal or remain similar. And what that's telling us is through the DOE this box isn't moving. Now that, I love that. I'm going to do the center points anyway here. I have to do the center points as a confirmation test. So I've got to do this test. These points have got to be done. What I would normally do though, I'd normally do them after I've done the two level. But there's nothing wrong with doing it like this. These points have to be run. I might as well just run them all in the same experiment potentially. Obviously what I would do is clean them out the way for me to analyze the two level DOE and then I would look at them as a confirmation test. But by doing it like this, what I'm proving is that through the experiment, while I was going through my, in this case, it would be 11, 11 runs, 11 tests down in this direction. While I was doing my 11 tests, that box remained in exactly the same place. And it wouldn't matter, by the way, whether I don't confirm. If I don't confirm in a way that when you're looking at the residuals, what we'd be seeing is if I don't confirm because I've got data, I've got data landing up here, then that would still be telling me. And of course, they're nice and consistent, so they're all in the same place. It isn't that they're all on the linear line, it's that they're all in the same place. If they're all in the same place, what it's telling me is the middle of that box did not move during the DOE. Now one of the nice things about this, my technique, one of the things I have to do, if I don't confirm, one of the tests I have to do, I go back and retest a corner point. And if the corner point is in the same place, I know that the reason I didn't confirm is because I've got curvature and not because the design space has moved. So I do have to do extra testing using my technique. So I really like this idea of doing center point, half the test, center point, half the test, and then a center point at the end. It's a really nice use of the center point technique. Now obviously the third technique is very straightforward. If you look here at the central composite design that we've got in Excel, well, you would just do the whole test. You can see the midpoints here are sort of two thirds of the way down the table. And of course you would just do the, do the test as published and you would get the midpoints as part of the DOE as part of doing a three level experiment. Um, the problem with going straight to the three level experiment this thing, of course, is, is more tests straight away. Potentially, therefore, it's more, it's more expensive. If you find out that the relationship was linear, you didn't need to do the extra tests. So when testing's expensive, sometimes you're cutting up samples and you're x-raying them and tests can be costly, or indeed they can be time consuming. You don't necessarily want to jump straight to this. So I like to do the augmentation technique, but I think from now on, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the augmentation technique, but I'm gonna use this technique. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do them first, I'm gonna do them in the middle, and I'm gonna do them last and that enables me to anchor the design space or to know that I've anchored the design space. That's what we're actually doing. We're proving that we're anchoring the design space. And that's how to use center points. So when it asks you, how many center points do you want? So you can see here, look, when I go into the software, it asks this question, how many center points do you want? And people think this is about uh, sample size. It's not about sample size. 
Here, look, how many centre points will I be asking for? Well, typically, I'd be asking for three centre points because I'm going to do one at the beginning, one in the middle, and one at the end. So typically, from now on, I would ask for two centre points. So, sorry, three centre points. Normally, I'd only ask for two. Um, when I'm going to augment, I only do two rows of centre points when I'm building up the central composite. But from now on, I'm going to ask for three centre points when I reach this point. There is the use of centre points when you're doing a design of experiments. It helps to tell you that your design space is stable. And that's a great use of the centre point. It's also to tell you that you have a linear model or you have a curved model. The use of centre points in design of experiments.